read it with me to Genesis chapter 11 and Tufu, verse 27. Tufungue mwanzo 11. Yeah. I think the reason why this chapter has become more clear to me na moja ambazo fungu hili limeweza kufafanuliwa kwangu is because I've come to Africa. Ni kwa sababu nimekuja katika sehemu hii ya Afrika ama bara la Afrika. You talk a lot about family. Munanena munazungumza sana kuhusu familia. You talk a lot about your names. Munanena ama kuzungumza kuhusu majina yenu. You talk a lot about where you come from. Na munazungumza kuhusu mahali mlikotoka. So as I read this passage, I want you to hear it like you're reading it in this place where we are in Africa. Tunaposoma fungu hili muli I think some of you can sense as I read this your father leaving and going to another place. Leaving his tribe. Leaving his family. Leaving his father's house. And going where God led him. Genesis 11, beginning at verse 27. Uh, want me to read it? Yes. This is the account of Terah's family line. Terah became the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran became the father of Lot. While his father Terah was still alive, Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans, in the land of his birth. Abram and Nahor both married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai. The name of Nahor's wife was Milcah. She was the daughter of Haran, the father of both Milcah and Ishka. Now Sarai was childless because she was not able to conceive. Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of his son Abram, and together they set out from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran... They settled there. Terah lived 205 years, and he died in Haran. The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. My task today and for the next three days is to talk a little bit about a biblical theology of mission. So as I sat at my desk many thousand miles away, I thought about that. Na nikikaa kwenye kiti changu kule nyumbani niliwaza kuhusu maneno haya. What is the basis, the foundation of mission? Je, ni nini ndio msingi wa kazi ya missionary? And so like any good preacher or Bible teacher, I had to go back to Genesis 1:1. Na hivyo kama mhubiri yoyote ama mwalimu wa neno la Mungu nilirudi katika mwanzo moja moja. We had to begin we have to begin at the beginning. Lazima tuanze mwanzo. Because missions is not something outside of God's nature. Na umishonari haiko kando ya utu wa mungu. Mission comes out of the nature of God himself. Na kazi umishonari natokana na mungu mwenyewe. So a God that creates, we know, is the God who speaks creation into existence. Na mungu anaye umba ndi anayeleta anazungumza umbaji kwa ya liyo umba ikote duniani. And his speaking reveals his being. When God speaks, he communicates his holy nature. The basis of revelation is God speaking to us. He communicates himself through creation. So as he reveals his being in creation, he says, let there be. Five times God says, five times, God says, let there be, and the universe comes into existence. The God of all creation, at the end of creation, says, let us make. 
And he says, let us make man and woman in our image. Na baada ya kazi yake ya kuumba dunia hii yote akasema waacha tumuumbe mwanadamu kwa nafsi kama aliye kama sisi. He makes all the universe to talk to two people about himself. Na anajenga aliumba dunia nzima ili kuweza kunena kwa watu wawili kuhusu jinsi yeye alivyo. So he breathes his life into them. Hivyo anatoa pumzi yake ya uhai kwa watu hawa wawili. He blesses them with words of blessing. Na hivyo anawabariki na maneno ya baraka. And he gives them their life purpose. Na anawapa lengo la maisha yao. I wonder if we could not say this is the holy one saying to two people I want you to be holy as I am holy. Hivyo alivyo jinsi alivyosema kwamba nyinyi wawili muwe watakatifu jinsi nilivyo mtakatifu. But I had to go even deeper than that. Na hivyo ikabidi niingie ndani zaidi. The God who speaks speaks before creation. Yule Mungu anayenena alinena kabla ya dunia. The basis of all revelation is God speaking in himself. Na hivyo hata mwanzo wa ufunuo wake Mungu inaanza na uumbaji wa dunia. God speaks Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Na Mungu ananena Baba, Mwana na Roho Mtakatifu. He does not need us to speak. Hataki sisi tunene lolote. There's a communion in the Trinity that you and I must base everything we believe upon. Na hivyo kuna umoja katika utatu wake Mungu ambao unanena na hahitaji sisi kunena. Would you pray for my interpreter? Muniombe. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm not very clear, he's making everything I say very clear. So thank you very much for this. God speaks within himself. Mungu ananena ndani yake. He speaks creation into existence. Ananena dunia nzima ama mambo yaliyoumba yawe. And now he reveals himself to two people, he says, and you are my image. Na hivyo anajifunua kwa watu wawili na kusema nyinyi ni mfano wangu. Missions comes from the heart of a God who is always self-giving. Na umishonari unaanza kutoka roho wa Mungu ambaye anajitolea kila wakati. His language is always self-revealing. Na maneno anayozungumza ni ya kujifunua. God wants to share his life with every created person. Mungu anataka kushiriki uhai wake na yale yote aliyoyaumba. And anyone who's a missionary says that is our God. Na hivyo kila mmoja aliye mmishonari anasema huyo ndio Mungu wetu. I hesitated talking about the Trinity this morning. Nilikuwa ninatashusha kunena kuhusu utatu wake Mungu asubuhi ya leo. In America, Christians go to sleep when you talk about the Trinity. Kwa sababu unaposema kuhusu utatu wa Mungu watu wanalala kule Marekani. They're not very excited about theology. Kwa sababu hawafurahishwi sana na mambo ya kitheolojia. But I remembered just this week. Na nikakumbuka wiki hii that the deepest thoughts I've been given about God the Trinity na mambo mawazo ambayo nilipewa kuhusu utatu wa Mungu most of them came from North Africa. Na yote yalikuja katika bara la Afrika kule kaskazini. So you are very deep theological people. Nyinyi ni watu wa wandani wa kitheolojia. So let's dive in together. Bai kwa hivyo tuingie ndani. The word of God is the revelation of God to us. Neno la Mungu ni ufunuo wa Mungu kwetu sisi. These words are not just history. Hii sio historia tu. They're not just for me to use for making good sermon. Sio tu mimi kuzitumia kutengeneza mahubiri mazuri. The God who speaks wants me to hear his voice in the word. Mungu anayenena anataka nisikie sauti yake kutoka kwa neno takatifu. And he says take my word in all of the earth and speak my words to the all of my creatures. Anasema chukua neno langu kwa dunia nzima na unene neno langu kwa viumbe vyote ulimwenguni. And just like we heard this morning. Na jinsi tulivyosikia asubuhi ya leo, he always bears fruit through his faithful missionaries. Na hivyo anaweza kuzaa matunda mazuri kwa wale ambao wanamfuata kwa uaminifu. So the Trinity at base is a divine family if you will. Na hivyo kwa undani ya utatu hiyo ni familia ukiwaza. And the male and the female, Adam and Eve are the image of that family. Na hivyo Adamu na Hawa ni mfano wa utatu huo. God says to these two persons, I invite you to share in my divine communication. Na anawaambia njoni mshiriki nami katika uungu wangu. There's a triune family. Ni ni familia ya watu watatu. There's a human family. Kuna familia ya kimidada. And God says I want you to make the world fruitful. 
Na anasema angetaka dunia nzima iwe na matunda. Now the more I thought about this, I thought maybe the image of God is the key for missions. Hivyo nikawaza ya kwamba labda mfano wa Mungu ndio kifunguu cha kazi ya missionary. If I can begin to know who God is in himself, Nikianza kujua jinsi Mungu alivyo ndani yake and by his grace he can allow me to reflect his nature na kwa neema yake niweza kuonyesha mfano huo that means i'm always speaking to the god who speaks hivyo nitakuwa nikinena kwa Mungu anayenena which i think we call prayer na kwa hiyo kwa njia hiyo tunaita maombi and we're always speaking to others about the one who speaks na hivyo tunanena kwa wale wengine kuhusu Mungu anayenena and so god puts us in family Vivyo Mungu anatuweka kwa familia. Where we can learn to communicate. Tunajifunza kuzungumza. Where we can share love. Yeye tukishiriki upendo. Where we can get to know other person. Tukijua watu wengine. And God says that's my image in the world. Na hiyo ndio mfano wangu katika dunia. Now all of you have preached about Adam and Eve. Ninyi wote labda mmehubiri kudu Adamu na Hawa. You know that God gave to his image these two persons three commands. Na hivyo kwa mfano wake akapa watu watu hawa mambo matatu amri tatu. He says he said I want you to rule faithfully. Akasema anataka mtawale kwa uaminifu. He said I want you to work fruitfully. Na uweze mfanya kazi na muzae matunda. And he also said to them interestingly I want you to choose between two trees. Na akawaambia jambo la kushangaza lingine ni kwamba mweze kuchagua kutoka matunda miti miwili. I'm also very interested that God said fourthly not by a command he said I want you to recognize your basic need. Na hivyo kwa ya nne ni kwamba lazima mtambue yale ambayo mnahitaji mahitaji yenu. He said to Adam you need another. Akamwambia Adamu ya kwamba unahitaji mwingine. I laugh about this every time I read it. Ninacheka sana nikisoma neno hili. The first word any human being spoke that we know of Jambo la kwanza ambalo binadamu alinena was not a worship service. Sio ya kwamba alikuwa uh, uh, wakati kwa kuabudu. It wasn't a praise song. Haikuwa wimbo wa kusifu. It was a man recognizing his wife, a woman. Ni kwamba yule mwanadamu alimtambua bibi wake ambaye ni mwanamke. And he broke into exuberant praise. Na hivyo aka aka kwa kuchangamka akaanza kuimba but that was the beginning of human speaking na hivyo ndio binadamu akaanza kunena and god wasn't jealous mungu hakukuwa na wivu he said exactly that's what i am in myself i am full of words of blessing and love and praise ya kwamba nimejawa na upendo na sifa and those who know god na u- na wale wanaomjua Mungu speak the words of God wananena maneno ya Mungu to those who are closest to them kwa wale walio karibu na wao the climax of creation uh, kilele cha maumbile is a man recognizing his need of another ni kwa mtu kutambua mahitaji yake ya mtu mwingine and god said that is very good na akasema hayo ni mazuri i believe that foundation ninaamini ya kwamba msingi huo the god of holy love mungu wa uh, mtakatifu wa upendo who wants to be known ambaye angetaka kujulikana says i want you to know one another in me nataka mjuane kupitia kwangu and everyone who does not know jesus na yule ambaye hamjui kristo does not have that sense of what is true and holy and right ana hisia hiyo ya mambo mazuri ya takatifu na ya kweli Our sweet bishop mentioned last night. Now ask of wetu alisema jana jioni. The gentleman the scholar Dennis F Kinlaw. Who you um saw me Dennis F Kinlaw? Like Dr. Langat, my life has been deeply impacted by this theologian and man of God. Na jinsi ask of wetu hata nami nimeguzwa na mafunzo ya theolojia ya huyu mtu. And one day when he was teaching me he said these words. Na wakati mmoja akinifunza akasema maneno haya. He said we are not like God. Sisi sio kama Mungu because unlike God we are not self originating. Kwa kama sisi hatuna mwanzo wetu wenyewe. That means we can't begin ourselves. Sisi hatuwezi kujianzisha. We're not self sustaining. Hatuwezi kujikimu. We're not self explaining. Hatuwezi kujieleza. We are not self fulfilling. Hatuwezi kuji uh, kamilisha. We need God to be all of that to us. Tunahitaji Mungu awe hayo yote kwetu sisi. That's very difficult for me to remember. Hiyo ni ngumu sana kwangu kukumbuka. In the large city where I live. 
kwa ile mji mkuu ambao ninaishi because people seem to be so self sufficient kwa sababu kila mtu ni kama ana mahitaji yanayomtosha they don't seem like they need anything au ni kama hawahitaji lolote Sometimes I feel like the word of God may not actually meet their mental rational capacities. But the Lord says to me, be a missionary. I need you to speak truth into that life. Because without me they are not fulfilled. Without me they don't know why they're here. Bila mimi hawezi hajui kwa nini wako hapa. Without my truth they don't know where they're going. Na bila ukweli wangu hawajui wanaelekea wapi. Now I'm intrigued by those two trees, aren't you? Mimi kwa hivyo ninashangazwa na miti hii miwili. He said there's a tree of life. Kuna mti wa uhai. And you can eat of any tree including the tree of life if you want to. Unaweza kukula miti yoyote hata hii mti ya uhai. But there's one tree you can't eat of. Na kuna mti mmoja ambao haupaswi kuguza. The tree of good and evil. Mti wa kweli na maovu. And we don't understand fully what all is going on. Na tuelewi yote ambayo yanaendelea mahali hapa. But basically what God is saying is you do not define what is right or wrong. Na Mungu anasema hapa ya kwamba wewe huwezi kufafanua yale ambayo ni mazuri na yale ambayo ni maovu. But what happened next shows us how important communication is with God. Na inayofuata inatueleza nini kwa nini mazungumzo ni ya maana. When the enemy came, the Bible says this in chapter 3, Genesis 3 and verse 1. Na wakati adui alipokuja katika mwanzo tatu Biblia yasema, The serpent that was crafty, it says he said na yule mwovu alipokuja akasema the beginning of all that is sinful yale mwanzo ya dhambi zote the beginning of all that's unholy ma mwanzo wa yale ambayo sio takatifu the beginning of everything that made creation a chaotic place yale ambayo yalifanya maumbile yote yawe katika hali ya kuchanganyisha is when the image of god did not listen to god but to another ni wakati mfano wa Mungu aliwacha kumsikiliza Mungu na kumsikiza mwingine. The, the serpent said, na yule nyaka akasema, did God say? Je, Mungu aliuliza alisema? And in that one sentence, na kuwa sentence hiyo moja, he warped all truth into falsehood. falsehood. Na hivyo akabadilisha ya kweli ikawa uongo. He turned blessing into curse. Akabadilisha baraka ikawa ni uh, laana. He turned worship into accusation. Akabadilisha kuabudu ikawa ni uh, kutilia shaka. One of my favorite theologians says it this way. Na mmoja wa na ambaye nampenda mtheolojia alisema hivi. Sin began when we stopped talking to God but began talking about God. Na dhambi liingia tulipoacha kuzungumza na Mungu na tukaanza kuzunguza kuhusu Mungu. As Frederick would say to us all, never stop praying to God. Jinsi uh, Reverend uh, Frederick aliposema tusiwache kuzungumza na Mungu. Sin is a misuse of communication. Dhambi ni kutumia vibaya mazungumzo. Miscommunication means a break with God. Tunapoacha kuzungumza ni tumevunja uh, tumevunja ila uhusiano wetu na Mungu. And so Satan says, yes, because I don't want anyone to be intimate with God. Shetani anasema singependa mtu awe na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu. I don't want the image of God to be self-giving. Sitaki ile mfano wa Mungu wa kujitolea. I don't want the man and the woman to trust each other anymore. Sitaki mume na mke waweze kukubaliana. And so all that God the word The word of God wanted has been smashed by our saying Satan we want to go your way. Na hivyo yale yote mazuri ya kutoka kwa Mungu yamevunjwa kwa sababu tumesema shetani tunapenda kuenda njia zako. We left the communication no the conversation of the Trinity and said Satan we want to hear your voice more. Na hivyo tuka uhusiano ulivunjika tuliposema shetani tuwache kunena kuhusu utatu wa Mungu na tumfuate njia za shetani. So Your culture and mine bear the result of that. Na hivyo utamaduni wenu na wangu umefuata njia hizo. Most of our words are to hurt other people. Maneno yetu mengi ni kuchukiza watu wengine. We have tribes that are enmity with one another all across the world. 
Na hivyo tumefanya wadui na watu wengine katika duniani kote. We have children who are verbally abused in their homes every day. Kuna tuko na watoto ambao wame wanachukizwa na kutekelezwa katika nyumba zetu. And it all goes back to Satan's miscommunication of truth. Na hivyo mwanzo wake ni jinsi shetani alivyobadilisha ukweli. I'm coming to the place where I believe this. Nimefika mahali ninapoamini ya kwamba The definition of definition of missions is good news. Ya kwamba kazi ya missionary ni uh, ma, maneno mazuri. Good news is a good proclamation. Maneno mazuri ni kule kutangaza. We are calling people back into relationship with the God who wants to speak to them. Tunaita watu waje ili kumsikiliza Mungu ambaye angependa kunena na wao. We're saying that's what you were created for. Tunawaambia mliumbwa kwa kwa njia hiyo. The missionary calls people back into relationship. Mungu missionary anawaita watu wawe na uhusiano na Mungu. We offer them blessing not curses. Tunawapa baraka sio laana. We offer truth where people have lived only in lies. Tunawapa ukweli kwa wale ambao wameishi maisha ya uongo. We name people what God has named them. Tunawapa majina jinsi Mungu alivyopoapa majina. They don't know they're beloved by God. Hawajui ya kwamba wanapendwa na Mungu. They don't know they're his prized possession. Ya wajui ya kwamba Mungu wao ni kitu ya maana mbele za Mungu. They don't know he wants to be their friend. Hawajui kwamba Mungu anataka kuwa marafiki zao. The missionary gives to all the world a way to converse, to communicate with God. Na hivyo missionary anapatia dunia nzima jinsi ya kunena na Mungu. We're called to speak his words. Tunaitwa kunena maneno yake Mungu. And God says, offer my words because when you do you offer me to the world. Hivyo anasema apeanene maneno yangu kwa maana mnapopeanene mnapotea maneno mazuri kwa dunia nzima. You know you look even more beautiful than you did to me last night. Leo mmekaa sura zenu ni nzuri. I think it's because I can see all of your faces. Kwa sababu naweza kuona nyusa zenu. But a wonderful, wonderful thing to be in a room of a thousand preachers. Na ni ni nzuri ni vyema sana kukaa na wahubiri 1000. A thousand missionaries. Wa missionary 1000 who speak the words of God in Wa, villages across this entire part of, of Kenya. Wanaonena maneno ya Mungu kwa vijiji maelfu katika sehemu hii. Words that don't manipulate but offer grace. Maneno ambayo hayachanganyishi bali yanatoa neema ya Mungu. Words that don't enslave people but free them in Jesus name. Maneno ambayo hayafanyi watu wawe watuma ila wawe huru kwa Kristo. Words that don't damage people but heal them offer Ma, them healing manana ambao hayaleti chuki mioyoni mwa watu ila yanaleta uponyaji maishani mwao you know what happens next in the bible je mnajua ni nini kilifanyika hapo kwenye biblia bad communication leads to a brother murdering a brother na hivyo yale mazungumzo mabaya yaliyovunjika yakafanya ndugu amuue ndugu yake maybe you know something about that in kenya labda mnajua hivyo kwenye nchi yetu ya kenya there's one city in america kuna mji mmoja kule Marekani where 360 young men are shot to death every single month. Mahali ambapo vijana 360 wanauawa kila mwezi. A world full of vengeance and violence. Mahali ambapo watu kuna vita. And the only glimmer of hope in Genesis chapter 4 is this one phrase. Na jambo ambalo linatupatia tumaini linapatikana mwanzo mlango wa 4. Chapter 4:26 Mlango wa 4 mstari wa 26 They began to call upon the name of the Lord. Na hivyo wakaanza kuita kwa jina lake Mungu. The only hope in any culture. Tumaini kwa utamaduni wa wote. Is when a man or woman of God begins to speak again to the God who made them and redeemed them. Ni wakati mwanamume na mwanamke wanaanza kunana kwa mara ya mara nyingine tena na Mungu. And I'm also amazed that the next paragraph chapter 5 verses 1 and 2. Na mlango wa 5 mstari wa 2 sounds almost like creation once again. Ni kama tena maumbile ya kiumbwa tena upya. It says he created them. Akawafanya. Made them male and female. Akawajenga uh, mwanaume na mwanamke. He blessed them. Akawabariki. He made them in his image. Akawamfanya kwa mfano wake. And now in chapter 5 1 Adam has another son. Na hivyo mlango wa tano Adamu ako na kijana mpya. And he says this is the image of God. Na huyu ni mfano wake Mungu. Doesn't last very long though does it? Na ila iliende tena mbali. By chapter 6 that waterfall. Na hivyo mlango wa sita tena kuna mabadiliko. That 
that waterfall of sin begins again to wave over all the world. No intimacy. Only idolatry. And then out of all of that mess comes one person. His name is Noah. Whose name means peace, by the way. And then it has a beautiful phrase. He does all these right kind of things. But it's not what he does that makes God pleased. God shows Noah his favor. And one person in all the world begins to communicate with God again. He is obedient to his voice. So 6.13 reads, And God said, And three times in two chapters we have this response. Noah did everything God said. God is looking for communication of obedient love. The redemption of the world rested on one person saying, I hear your voice and I will do whatever you ask me to do. And because of that relationship, God did not destroy all the world. After the flood, Yahweh says to Noah I will never curse the world the ground like that again look at my face he blessed he spoke words of blessing over Noah and his family and he said to them be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Why is it that we don't understand the basics of the biblical theology of mission? It is so foundational. I'm sure in Africa you make lots of covenants. I'm sure in Africa all you need is to shake somebody's hand and they know you're going to keep the covenant. In America that's almost totally gone. We have long contracts of legal words that lawyers have to debate about. Our words mean nothing, it seems, these days. But God makes a covenant he keeps forever. If you obey me, I will bless the world. It's amazing how, long, how little that beautiful story lasts. There's something about us where we just don't want to be intimate with God. In chapter 10, we're told about all the nations for the first time. Last week, I did a very stupid thing. I, I I tried to count all the tribes and nations in Genesis 10. I'm not very good at mathematics. But I think if you count those names, you will find the number 70 nations. I'm intrigued by that number in the Bible. But if you take a look at 11.1, I want you to see this with me. 11.4, look at the response of these people who have built their own society. 11, chapter 11 and verse 4. Kwa hivyo mlangu wa kumina moja, mstar wane. As they're building the Tower of Babel, wakati wanapo jenga, they say, nara cha babeli, wakasema, it says in verse 4, then they said, Come, 
Notice the words next. Let us build ourselves a city. With a tower. Excuse me. With a tower that reaches to the heavens. So that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Sin makes us very dumb. Let us let up the same words God used in Genesis early chapters. Let us make let us make a make let, make for ourselves a tower. A city, a city. Which means we want to find our, our worth in what we do. We don't want God to come to us. We're going to build a tower. We're going to go to him. He can't name us what we should be named. We're going to name ourselves. But, but notice the base of all that is fear. We've got to protect ourselves, otherwise we'll be scattered over all the earth. You see the biblical theology of mission. God is looking for his image to image his holy love. If we hear another voice, we lose God completely. When God finds those who call upon him, he can bless the world. But we keep trying to take things into our own hands. So the, the verses I read at the beginning of our time together tell us that as these these people with one language one common language, God said, you're going you're gonna to hurt yourselves by what you plan. But So he scatters them in all the earth. And if you follow those tribes, you'll find there's one man who ends up in Ur of the Chaldees that we need to know about. God always recreates the world through one person. I'm intrigued. When we first meet Abram, we find out this about his family. We're told in 11.30 and following that Sarai was barren. In those days, to be barren was to be empty. It was viewed as being a curse. And so this man and his barren wife begin to reach out to follow the God who speaks. This call to communion I believe is the solution to the sin of, pro, of, of, of problem of sin. When the serpent speaks, you and I get untruth. We don't believe in God any longer. We rebel in disobedience. And the result is curse every time. Curse followed by death. But now you have one man and his wife Na, na, na mke wake, who respond to the God who speaks they don't listen to the serpent any longer tena. they 
believe that what God said is the truth. At their base of their lives, they begin to trust God with everything they are. They don't rebel anymore. They obey with all of their lives. And the result is blessing and life for all the world. There are people in this room just like Abraham and Sarah, I believe. I hope they don't take this wrongly. I hope they don't take this wrongly. I thought last night as I ate supper with Frederick and Raeli. They're beautiful faces. Fifty years of following Jesus. I think forever in my life I'll have their faces when I think of Abraham and Sarah. What we've experienced this morning already is the fulfillment of all that God says in Abraham's story. If I can find one man, if I can find one woman who hear my voice, not just one day at an altar, not just one year or two years in the beginning of their mission organization, uh, outreach, if they'll trust me for five decades, I will bear fruit through their obedience in all the world. I believe through Abraham and Sarah, we see the image of God recreated. Do you remember when God sent Adam and Eve out of the garden? Do you remember where he sent them? He sent them east of Eden. And now, and now out of the east of Eden comes the salvation of the world. But God says to them, I want you to choose. You've got to choose me. I love Africa. I love it more and more as I get to be with you. The other day, Bishop Langat brought us this way in uh, on Sunday afternoon. And his language was very different from most American people. The tone in his voice changed when he crossed one of those rivers. I forget which one it was. He was getting closer to home and you could tell it. He began to talk about the villages. He talked about the Narok community. He began to talk about lands and his father and mother. And I began to say in my heart, I think I understand now Genesis 12 more than I ever have in my life. Because Yahweh says to Abraham these things. You've got to choose between me and your land. Apparently in Kenya, if you're a respected man, you've got to have cattle and land. Do you think God was saying to Abraham, I want you to find your respect in me and not in your culture? I want you to leave your land. I want you to leave your family. I want you to leave your father's house. 
I want you to live only out of a relationship with me. Ningependa uishi maisha yako ukiwa na uhusiano nami. I want you to be in conversation with me. Ningependa tuwe na mazungumzo pamoja. Because if you go back to those places of finding your fulfillment. Ikiwa utarudi pale ili upate kuheshimiwa. The world will never know me. Kwa sababu hivyo dunia haiwezi kunijua mimi. And so that man and his wife made a decision. So mtu huyo na mke wake wakaamua. And God said, if you do this, na Mungu akasema ukifanya hivi. And he says five things. Mambo matano akasema. I will make of you a, a great nation. Nitakufanya uwe taifa kuu. I will bless you. Nitakubariki. I will make your name great. Nitafanya jina lako kuwa kuu. I will bless those who bless you. Nitawabariki walao kubariki. But this is the last one. Na la mwisho. Through you the world will bless themselves. Kupitia kwapo dunia itajibariki. It's amazing when one man and one woman listen to Jesus. Ni inashangaza mtu yafurahisha mtu mmoja ama mama mmoja akitii neno la Mungu. Every time that happens you undo the fall. Na kila mahala kila mara unapofanya hivyo tunaanza kuvunja ule kuanguka na dhambi duniani. Broken language is restored. Yale mazungumzo yaliyovunjika yanarekebishwa. Unfaithful relationships can be reconciled. Uhusiano ambao sio wa kukamilifu yanaanza kurudi kupatanishwa. Suspicion and distrust can be turned into intimate relationships of love. Na yale ambayo uhusiano ambao labda hauko kamilifu unaanza kupatanishwa. And what is wrong can be made right. Na yale ambayo si mazuri yanabadilishwa yawe mazuri. All of you preach on Abraham. Nyinyi wote mumehubiri kubwa Abrahamu. You know what happens next. Na mnajua nini kilifuata baadaye. His nephew Lot wants him. Na yule Lutu ambaye ni mmoja wana wa ndugu yake anataka shamba nzuri. And so Abraham says, fine, you can have the good land. Na hivyo akamwambia hivyo wewe chukua sehemu nzuri ya shamba. I'm going to go some place that's more like a desert. Na mimi nitaelekea kwenye sehemu ambayo ni kama jangwa. That's a man who's trusting God. For his promises. Huyu ni mtu ambaye anatumaini anatumaini kwa hadi za Mungu. Look at chapter 13 and verse 15 with me really quickly. Mlango wa 13 mstari wa 15. The Lord is talking to Abram again. Na Mungu ananena na Abrahamu tena. And he says to him in verse 15, All the land that you see I will give to you and your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth so that if anyone could count the dust then your offspring could be counted go walk through the length and the breadth of the land for i am giving it to you and you know what's happening next na mnajua ni nini nafuata baadaye god says if you don't grasp for things yakamwambia ikiwa hautashikilia mambo ama vitu i will multiply your your name nitaweza kufanya jina lako liwe kuu a little later on abraham has offered some money na baadaye Abraham akapewa pesa kidogo from a very wealthy king na kwa mmoja wa mfalme wa sehemu hiyo and this man has learned to trust god na mtu huyu amejua kumwamini na kumtumainia Mungu he knows the voice of god anajua sauti ya Mungu and he says to the king these words na anamwambia Mungu mfalme maneno haya you cannot bribe my soul ya kwamba hauwezi kutoa hongo kwa roho yangu and so in chapter 15 verse 5 god says this na katika mlango wa 15 I found one who can speak my words. Anasema ya kwamba nimepata yule ambaye anaenena maneno yangu. I I I'm finding a man who wants my right. He knows what's wrong and he chooses right, my right. Na nimepata mtu ambaye anajua yale ambayo ni maovu na anataka kufuata ukweli wangu. And so he says Abraham look up in the sky. Na akamwambia Abraham tazama bingu. Count the stars. Hesabu. Eh. They know what. Nyota. Yes. Count the stars. Hesabu nyota zote. That's kind of a ridiculous request, isn't it, to count the stars? Hebu fikiria jinsi ya shangazi uambiwe hesabu nyota zote. He says as innumerable as the stars, innumerable as the stars, so shall your descendants be. Jinsi nyota zilivyo nyingi, ndivyo vizazi vyako vitakuwa. Listen to me. Nisikize. I don't know how sinful Kenya is. Sijui wa Kenya wamefanya dhambi kuu namna gani. But every single person who does not talk to Jesus is in sin. 
Yule ambaye hanene na Kristo yeye ako kwenye dhambi. And the result of that is always vengeance and violence and chaos. Na hivyo mwisho wake itakuwa ni vita na uadui. The theology of mission is this. Na theolojia ya missionary ni hii. The God who speaks. Mungu anayenena wants us to respond to his voice. Anataka tutii sauti yake. And when he does he says if you trust me I will bless the world. Ya kwamba ikiwa mtaniamini nitabariki dunia yote. Do you remember how often this promise occurs in the book of Genesis? Je, mnaona jinsi ahadi hii imetolewa mara nyingi kwenye kitabu cha mwanzo? In 1818 where Abraham is with Sodom and Gomorrah wakati wa mlango wa 18 mstari wa 10 mstari wa 18 katika jiji ama kijiji cha Sodom and Gomorrah he says i will make of you abraham a great nation akamwambia abraham nitakufanya uwe taifa kuu so that all nations will believe in me ili mataifa yote yaniamini he sacrifices he's willing to sacrifice isaac in chapter 22 na mlango wa 22 abraham anajitolea mwana wake isaac kama kafara and god says to him because of this I'm going to bless all nations. Na Mungu anamwambia kwa sababu ya hii nitabariki mataifa yote. To Isaac in chapter 26. Kwa kwake Isaac mlango wa 26. He says Isaac don't go to Egypt. Anamwambia usienda kwenye mji wa ama sehemu ya Misri. Like my your father trust in me. Kama baba yako niamini. And if you do I will bless all nations. Ikiwa utaniamini basi nitabariki dunia nzima. To Jacob in chapter 28 verse 4. Na kwa Yakobo mlango wa 28 anamweleza. His father blesses Jacob and says these words. Na Jacob anabarikiwa na baba yake akisema maneno haya. May you become a community of peoples. Ikiwa wewe uwe ujamii ama ujamaa wa watu. God is the one who originates all mission. Mungu ndio mwanzilishi wa kazi ya umishonari. And if one man, ikiwa mtu mmoja, if one woman, ama mama mmoja, hears his voice, atasikia sauti yake, in constant communion of love, akiwa na mazungumzo ya upendo, he will bless you, atakubariki, he will lead you, atakuongoza, he'll provide for you, atakutoshelesha, and his promise is true. Na ahadi zake ni za kweli. Through your hearts all nations will be blessed. Kwa kupitia roho ama moyo wako mataifa yote yatabarikiwa. Hallelujah Jesus.